Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Build Tips Part 2. So we're going to be talking a little bit more on just tips and tricks on assembling the frame, that type of thing. I'm going to try to go over kind of any questions maybe that I can think of that have come up in the Discord, um, that kind of thing. So what I'm doing right now is um, I'm in mad scientist mode a little bit here. Uh, I took apart my yellow rook and I'm just starting to assemble my uh, newer rook here with um, Sparta 3D uh, PLA Galaxy Purple and PTG for the frame. This is a Obsidian, Galaxy Obsidian, PTG Plus from Sparta 3D. Um, so first thing here, for the bottom feet, these actually uh, thread into the frame here with M5 by 10 bolts. I have made these holes just ever so slightly smaller now, so they thread in perfectly. Um, if you have a frame already printed that has, uh, the holes are a little bit too big, you can definitely go in from the top with a larger M5 and put a nut on the bottom. That's completely fine. Um, this is the latest revision though, and it's um, what I'm calling a release version, Mark 1, of the base. So like I say, I have made those holes a little bit smaller to make sure that you can thread in M5 by 10 bolts into the bottom. Um, this is my new bed frame. It uses less plastic. It's like 30 or 40 minutes quicker to print. Um, and it has the Rook logo in the middle, which I really like. So that is an option to print. Um, something also people, a lot of people ask about is mounting the glass. So here is my old bed frame. So how the glass is actually mounted is these 3D printed pads on the bottom that actually the M4 bolts thread go into, into the base here with your um, adjustable nubs here. These are VHB taped to the glass. Again, um, by default, this printer is not meant to have a heated bed. You can definitely heat it if you want though, if you're printing PLA or something like that. Um, I would recommend maybe you use a bed that has a V0 mod. There's definitely a few bed frames that have a V0 mod. So you can use a V0 bed. Um, this should still be completely fine with printing PLA on a heater with a heater. Um, the VHB tape's good to like 130 degrees or something like that. That's why I use it. So um, this would still be okay if you do want to heat this. Um, I just assembled this and I designed this printer to not have a heated bed. For this build size, I don't really need it. Uh, it simplifies the build. There's less parts, that type of thing. So I always use glass and I use painter's tape or capped on tape as a build surface. And... A tip for that, if you print really hot for your first layer, so 220 for PLA, it will stick really nice to painter's tape or capped on tape. So that is how the bed attaches. There's these little pads that you can find on the GitHub and they VHB to the glass and then you can adjust the build plate accordingly. So that's kind of default spec for the Rook. Another thing is, again, um, it's been said many times, Definitely, definitely lubricate your bearings and lubricate your linear rails. Almost no linear rails or bearings come with lubrication by default. All they have is a rust preventative oil, which is not usable for motion. So soak them in some isopropyl alcohol for a day and get all the dirt and grit and grime and oil off of them and let them fully dry and then lubricate them. This is what I use for lubrication. I picked this off on Amazon. It's really good grease, uh, Super Lube brand here. This is PTFE grease. It's suitable for these linear rods and bearings and also linear rails. So that's generally what I use for lubrication. Um, so that's a recommendation. Again, don't forget to clean out your rails and bearings and that type of thing. Um, it's definitely recommended. My general... Um, Generally how I do mine is I will actually take the carriage off of the linear rail very carefully and then I will take like a zip tie or something and I'll dip it in the super lube and I will actually put it all in and I'll run it into the ball bearings on the inside very, very well and then I'll slide the carriage back on and I'll wipe off the excess. A lot of times carriages, 
these little um, ports here for a lube don't work. These are, these are just there for show or whatever. They're not actually working. So I always take my carriages off, like I say, very carefully, and then I lubricate them and then I slide them back on. So that's just how I do it. Um, I'm sure there's many other ways to do it. Whichever way uh, you're comfortable with is generally gonna be okay, so. Another thing I wanted to go over for, with is tips on putting threaded inserts into your actual part. So I have my top plate here. This is again, this is printed in PTG Plus from Sparta 3D. This is um, generally what I do. I will actually put a guide bolt in the um, hole, a nice long one here. And this, especially for these threaded inserts, which are on the inside, um, and they're not very easy to access. This will keep the, the threaded insert from falling out or, or you know, misaligning. Um, and what I generally do is I will actually push in the threaded insert till it's just a little bit above the, the plastic part and I'll take a flat metal surface and then I will push it nice and flat so that you get a perfectly lined insert every time. You don't need a special tool for threaded inserts. It's totally fine and it's definitely a little easier if you have one. It won't help you a lot on this one just because it's so close to this edge. So I can show that off hopefully here on camera. So I have just a cheapo cheapo uh, soldering iron here. You want your soldering iron to be hot. So this is 300 degrees. You don't want to deform the plastic and push the part in. You actually want to melt the plastic and there is a difference. So if your threaded insert is taking a long time to really go into the plastic and it's just pushing the plastic out of the way, that's not correct. You want to have the plastic melting around the insert. So again, 300 or 350 um, C for your uh, soldering iron and um, let me just see if I can somehow struggle and put this in here. So again, I'm coming in from the side like this. I'm resting my soldering iron on here. It'll take a little bit longer for the heat set to heat up because it does have to heat up the bolt just a little bit. And I'm pushing, I'm putting very, very, very little pressure. Again, I want the heat to do all the work. So we'll just set it on here for a little bit. Um, I can see it's going in quite nicely now. And then, like I say, I will get it till it's just a bit above. So you can see there, it's not all the way in. And I will take my nice flat surface and I'll push down on it really, really good here. And I'll move it back and forth, make sure that's nice and flat. And hopefully you can see here, you'll get a really nice insert every time that's nice and flat and you won't have any problems and you can th unthread this bolt. And there you go. That's how I generally do my threaded inserts. Um, it doesn't even have to be just for the corner. You can see here, I also have one for the linear rails. So again, I've got a little bolt in there. It will actually help my, my insert from flying off while I'm trying to align it or anything like that. It's nice and helpful. So again, I'll take my uh, soldering iron, iron here. I'll come in from the side generally and I'll just gently press on it while that brass insert heats up. Again, we want the heat to do all the work and we want the heat to absolutely melt the plastic. We don't wanna push on the plastic and just push it out of the way. We want the plastic to surround the heat set and actually melt correctly. So it's going in really nice there now that it's heated up. Again, I'll leave a little bit sticking off the top here. These will stay warm for quite some time, so it's not a huge deal. And then I will push on the heat set with, uh, like I say, metal preferably, but if you have something that um, won't catch fire or something that won't melt as easily, you can use that as well. And then I will just push on that and you'll get a nice heat set there. Again, nice and level, works really well. I can now take this bolt off. Again, just be careful, the bolts might be a little bit hot. Now this is PTG, so 350 is probably recommended temperature for doing the heat sets, just it's a bit more resistant than PLA is. 
Um, but yeah, that, that'll give you some nice, flat, clean heat sets. And um, especially for these ones, there's only two of them that are really uh, awkward to put in here, but it will give you nice, clean um, heat set inserts for that. So that's generally how I do my heat sets. Um, trying to think here of uh, anything else. So I have actually updated the Y carriages here so that they now only use F695 bearings. They do not use 20 tooth idlers anymore. So if you, if you already ordered your 20 tooth idlers, that's fine. I am just trying to get rid of these stupid little shims. These are like, again, these are gone. You don't need these anymore. If you print out the new parts, you now just use the F695 bearings with M5 washers, just standard run of the mill M5 washers. So these are obviously way easier to find. They're cheap, um, they're easy to do. So um, for the idler towers, so the front idler towers is what I call these. I have made a slight modification so everything lines up quite nice. The hole in these goes all the way through. So, I mean, size doesn't really matter a whole lot. You just want a M5 bolt that obviously will go into the bottom, but it can be um, different lengths. Um, I believe this is an M5 by 30. So generally what I'll do is I'll tip this upside down. I'll thread it in just a little bit. Take my M5 washer, I'll pop it on first. I'll take my bearing then and I'll set it on. So there's actually two bearing stacks that will actually sit on here. So you can see here how the, the M5 bolt is holding everything. When you get to the end, it's it's definitely not super easy, but take your time and it's not that big of a deal. You can slide in the final washer. So these two bearings, they need another washer in between the two stacks. So bearings do not go, there's no washer in between the bearings, in between a stack of them, but or in between individual bearings, I should say. There's no washer in between, but there is a washer in between each stack. So like I say, this is generally how I do this. I don't know if I'll entirely be able to do it on camera here because it, like I say, it can get a little fiddle, fiddly here. But like I say, this is all I do. I'll use the M5 to my advantage. And then I can keep going like I say, stacking, stacking, stacking. And then once you get to the washer, you can just slip it in and take a X-Acto knife or a little tiny a flathead screwdriver and you can slide it in and it then basically put the M5 bolt in it. It actually works pretty well. It's, it's, it seems more finicky than it is um, and it works out quite well. So, and again, these are just threaded into plastic. This hole is quite small, so it threads in quite nice. Um, I'll just... I'm not done here with the, the bearings, but I can just thread it in so you get an idea. Once this is threaded all the way in, this bolt's not going anywhere. There's no force pulling up on the bolt. It's just to hold the, the belts. So yeah, I've adjusted this part so you don't need 20 tooth idlers anymore in those dumb shims. So that's nice there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can go over with on this. Um, for the build plates, uh, the nuts here i'll just pop this off nuts go on the bottom these are m3 by 10 you only need two of them you don't have to go crazy on these and then you'll have a nice clean look from the top that's generally why i put them on the bottom so again that's nice uh, bearing should press in uh, perfectly on your um, bed there now, I do have on the GitHub now, I have a tool, a 3D printed tool to check your tolerances before you start printing any of the frame out. You can print out that tool and it will give you a um, eight by two hole size so that you can check your printer's calibration and make sure that the hole fits perfectly. You can put one of your rods in there and make sure that it's just the perfect fit. The rods should go in with some resistance and hold nice. They shouldn't be loose or wobbly or anything like that. So it's a really quick print, um, just a basic 
rectangle essentially with a 8.2 millimeter hole in the middle just to make sure that your tolerance is okay. And if that's okay, generally everything should kind of come together and work out quite nice. Another tip here for the uh, Y carriages, you must attach these to the linear rails first before you put the bearings and the M5 bolts in because they're obstructed. They will obstruct the M3 bolts that actually hold this onto the carriage. So this has to be attached to the linear rail first and then you put in the bearings. Um, and again, these parts will be on GitHub. I made some cutouts here on the outside just so that you have better access to put in an M3 bolt on the side here, just so it's easier, because one M3 bolt, you probably can't see there, does go in there to hold into the carriage, so there's three. And then there's holes in the top here to put through a Allen wrench. Um, if I have one here. So these holes in the top are just meant to get an Allen in so you can tighten up the, the bolts. So it's just big enough here for a three millimeter Allen. So there's three of them. So yeah, that's pretty much the um, part two for the, the build tips. I don't wanna make these crazy long. Um, I wanna kind of provide as much detail and tips and tricks as I possibly can. Um, like I say, there's a lot of information on the Discord. Uh, definitely join the Discord. Feel free to support me on Patreon if you'd like. Um, comment on the video below and uh, I'll be making a third video here once I start getting more parts on and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks again everyone and I appreciate everyone who's interested in building a Rook. Talk to you later.